and this is what you find among the Eurasianists, or the Eurasianist adjacents. It's that they support every policy position that actually matters with regard to globalism. They just hate the American unipolar hegemonic empire because of their disdain for Anglo-ethnocentrism. You can kind of see this in how they've shifted from blaming Zog for everything to blaming the Anglo-Saxon liberal world order. These are guys with mixed ethnic backgrounds with no clear sense of belonging to any one ethnic group. And then they get into historically Anglo countries and they have disdain for Anglos because they're not accepted as Anglo. Not entirely unlike the dynamic between Jews and whites more broadly. And so we end up with this situation where they promote a sense of racial ethnocentrism to the exclusion of ethnic ethnocentrism. Which is how they end up at positions like, oh, it's a good idea to erase the border between Ukraine and Russia. The problem, though, with elevating race as though it's the prime component of identity, it alienates people from their sense of ethnic identity and even their sense of family. And if race is more important than family or ethnicity or nationality, then it necessarily follows that we should just have one central government for the entire white race. And that would obviously be a trend toward borderlessness, toward internationalism, toward this large spaces, civilization state idea that Dugan proposes, eliminating or suppressing the ethnic distinctions between individuated groups of white people isn't going to preserve the identity of those groups. At the end of the day, are we really saving the white race if we eliminate the distinctions between Anglos and Mediterraneans and Eastern Europeans and Northern Europeans? Isn't the intra-racial diversity of the white race kind of a feature of the white race? Would we even be the same race anymore if we were to just blend all of our ethnicities together? I don't think we would be. Embracing white collergism to stave off white genocide is like cutting off your leg to save your foot. But you'll notice that these Eurasianists, that these pan-white nationalists who masquerade as nativists and nationalists don't have any real qualms with the globalist agenda. They just want it to be administered by a different central state. Yeah, they'd like to change some of the aesthetics. They don't want homosexuality. They don't want the the homo part of globo homo, but they're totally down with the money printing. They're totally down with the central planning of everybody's biometric information through vaccine technology. They're totally down with erasing the borders of white countries in order to merge them into larger countries. But then when you zoom out and you look at the Eurasianists abroad, in addition to the ones in the West, you find that they support multiracial multiculturalism as well. It's not just pan-white nationalism for them. Pan-white nationalism is just the thin edge of the wedge. Their appeals to your sense of ethnocentrism, heritage, and tradition are a Trojan horse to get you off your guard. They ride in saying that they're concerned about what's happening to the white race, but then their proposed solution is to dehumanize Anglos, to erase the borders of white countries, and to have global government with less white representation. And it's not unique to TRS, it's endemic on what was formerly known as the alt-right in the West. The so-called dissident right is poisoned with this ideological nonsense.